Science Channel. Let's learn together. <laughs> the Poisoned Apple Once upon a time there lived a kind princess named Snow White. Her stepmother wanted to be the most beautiful in the whole kingdom. She had a magical mirror. Every now and then, she will ask, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most beautiful of all? The mirror will answer, You are my queen. Until one day the answer was, You are beautiful, but Snow White is more beautiful. The queen was furious and called the hunter, Take Snow White to the forest and kill her, she said. The hunter took Snow White to the forest, but let her go with the promise that she will not return to the castle. Snow White walked through the forest until she saw a house in the middle of it. The house was empty, but there was a lot of food on the table. So, being hungry, she sat down and ate. Then, tired, she saw seven beds in the bedroom. She chose one and went to sleep. Later that day, the seven dwarfs came home and saw that somebody ate from their food. Then they saw Snow White sleeping on one of the beds. Hearing noise and voices, Snow White woke up and scared told the dwarfs, Please don't send me away. Let me stay here with you. The seven dwarfs agreed and Snow White was happy to help them around the house. Every morning, before the dwarfs went to work, Snow White would say goodbye to each one of them. Coming back from work, the dwarfs and Snow White had fun dancing and singing and everyone was happy. Back in the castle, after a while, the queen went to the mirror and asked her question again. You are most beautiful, but Snow White is more beautiful, was the mirror's answer. Angry that Snow White is alive, the queen transformed into her true form, a witch. She went to her apple orchard and picked a nice, big red apple. Then, she poisoned the apple and went to find Snow White. The witch found Snow White picking apples. She said, Dear girl, taste this perfect apple. Snow White took a bite from the apple, even though the birds told her not to. Immediately she fell down, looking dead. The witch was happy and went away. But she did not pay attention to where she was heading and fell of the cliff. The dwarfs found Snow White asleep and could not wake her up. They made her a special bed from glass and let her sleep there. After a while, a prince riding through the forest saw Snow White and knelt beside the glass bed. The prince tried to make Snow White sit. Suddenly Snow White coughed out the poisoned apple bite and woke up. Snow White thanked the prince for saving her. When the seven dwarfs came home, they were super happy to find Snow White awake and well. Later the prince and Snow White invited everyone to celebrate their wedding and live together happily ever after. The princess with long golden hair. Once upon a time there lived a king and a queen. They wanted very much to have a child. The queen went to a special place to pick up a magical flower. She ate that flower and soon, she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. The king and the queen were very happy and named the baby girl Rapunzel. But they did not know that the magical flowers belonged to the black witch from the black tower. The witch was very upset that the queen took a flower from her garden without asking for permission. She snuck into the nursery and stole Rapunzel, taking her to the black tower. The black tower was very tall and had no doors, only one window high up, close to the sky. The king and the queen were very sad and offered a big prize to whoever find the baby girl. But no one could find her. The witch discovered that combing the girl's hair makes her young again. So she hold Rapunzel prisoner in the tower. As the tower had no doors, each time the witch was coming back home, she would climb Rapunzel's long golden hair. Years went by and the baby girl grew up to look like her mother. She was never allowed to leave the tower, so she learned to sing. One day, a prince who happened to stroll by the tower heard Rapunzel's song. He called, Hello there. Who is singing so beautiful? I do. Rapunzel answered. Come up if you wish, she said, letting her hair down the tower so the prince could climb on it. Rapunzel told the prince her story. Come with me. I know who your parents are and I will take you to them, the prince said. They climbed down the black tower and run away before the black witch came home. Later, when the witch came home and found Rapunzel gone was very angry but could do nothing to get her back. Finally, after a long ride through the forest, Rapunzel and the prince could see her parents' castle. The king and queen were very happy to see her. They hugged Rapunzel and thanked the prince for saving her. After a while, 
Rapunzel married the prince and they all lived together happily ever after. The Butterfly Princess Once upon a time there lived a beautiful princess. She was beautiful but mean. She would turn her back to everyone and make the servants cry after addressing them with mean words. You will know how it feels to be powerless and have your fate in someone else's hands, said the green witch to the princess. You will become a butterfly and anyone can chase you. And suddenly the princess transformed into a beautiful big blue butterfly. She flew out of the window and into the royal gardens. And from there she flew far away from the castle. In another kingdom, a prince liked to chase and catch butterflies. He even had a glass display with all the butterflies he caught. He continued to catch butterflies even when he grew up. One day he saw a very large and beautiful blue butterfly. He ran after the butterfly and caught it in the butterfly net. He placed the butterfly on his table and prepared to pin it down so it could be added to his collection. As soon as the pin touched the butterfly, it transformed into a beautiful princess. I was very mean to others and a witch wanted me to feel powerless, so she cursed me to be a butterfly, she said to the stunned prince. I think I learned my lesson, she continued. I will never again be mean to anyone. Would you like to marry me? The prince asked. I know you will be a good queen and everyone will love you. The princess agreed to marry the prince. Their wedding was celebrated for seven days and seven nights and they lived happily ever after. Twelve Swans and the Princess Once upon a time there were twelve brothers, all princes. They had one sister, and they were all good friends and helped each other. Their father, the king, had a new queen. This queen was a witch who did not like children. One day, while the king was away for a long time, the witch transformed all boys into swans. She told them, You will be swans by day and boys at night all your life. Now, fly far away from here. The swans flew away and waited for the night to transform back into the boys. Next morning they were swans again. And so days and nights passed away like this. Meanwhile, the princess asked the queen, Have you seen my brothers? I cannot find them anywhere. The queen told her what she did and added, I will keep you here to help around the kitchen. I am leaving to look for my brothers, said the princess. How can your spell be broken? You will have to pick up stinging nettles with your bare hands and knit a sweater for each of them. And you are not allowed to talk while you knit them, or the spell cannot be undone. The witch said, I will do everything to save my brothers, answered the princess. She dressed in plain clothes and started to pick up nettles. With her bare hands, the nettles stung badly, but she did not complain. She hid in a secret place in a forest to knit fast the twelve shirts for her brothers. Her new friends, the mice, helped gather nettles so she can finish the shirts faster. After a while, a young king riding in the forest saw the beautiful princes. He asked, Who are you? What are you doing here? but she could not talk to explain what she was doing. The king fell in love with her and took the princess and all her nettle work and made her his queen. The new queen was very nice with everyone, but she still did not talk as she continued to knit. The villagers were afraid she is a witch who will punish them with the nettle shirts, so they wanted her gone. She tried to explain with hand signs that she only has one more sleeve to knit on the last shirt, but they would not listen. Heartbroken. The king had to place the queen who continued to knit in a closed carriage to send her away. When twelve swans flew by, they stopped the carriage. The queen came out and threw the finished nettle shirts on the swans. At once a miracle happened. Each swan dressed in a nettle shirt, transformed into a prince. The twelve brothers told their story to everyone and the villagers were ashamed about their behavior. The good queen forgave them and went back to her king, and they lived together. Happily Ever After Princess Salt and Her Secret Once upon a time there lived a king with his three daughters. I do so much for you, how do I know you appreciate me? He asked the three princesses. One daughter said, My king, I appreciate you as I appreciate sugar. The king was pleased. The second daughter said, I appreciate you as I appreciate honey. The king was pleased. The third daughter approached and said, I appreciate you as I appreciate salt. Salt. 
It means you don't appreciate me at all. Get out of my castle, said the angry king. Sad, the princess left the castle. She found work as a cook at another castle. She was kind and worked hard and everyone loved her. One day, she heard that her father will come to visit, so she cooked all the fancy dishes. The guest king tasted the food. This food has no taste at all. Bring me the cook, he yelled. The cook approached the king and said, All you need is salt and then you can appreciate the food. The king recognized the cook as his banished daughter. He also recognized his mistake. Now I know how important is salt and that you do appreciate me. From then on, the king knew that his daughters loved and appreciated him and everyone was happy. Twelve Enchanted Princesses Once upon a time there lived a king and his twelve daughters. He could see that his daughters were always tired. They would sit with him and his court for a little bit every day and then go to sleep. They would sleep all day long. Every night they would ask for new shoes, and every morning the shoes would be ruined. The king placed guards outside their door, but no one walked through the doors. His daughters were seemingly staying in their rooms, but were tired at all times. And in the morning, their shoes were totally useless. The king placed guards at each window. Still nothing changed. The king gathered all men in his kingdom and told them about the princesses. Who finds what's happening can choose one of my daughters to marry, he promised. One man wanted to try his luck and sat on a chair inside the princess's room. Then, another one tried his luck, and another one, and many others. Every single man was asleep as soon as he entered the princess room. Each would drink a cup of tea and fall asleep. One night, the blue prince wanted to try his luck too. One of the princesses offered him a cup of tea. He faked drinking the tea and faked falling asleep. The twelve princesses knocked on the floor and a door opened under one of the beds. They all climbed down the stairs and walked through a forest. The blue prince took his invisible cape and followed the princesses. One of the princesses felt as if someone was following them, but she could see no one. They reached an underground ballroom, where twelve handsome princes were waiting for them. They all started to dance and have fun. Dance? Dance, my children, the witch said. Your fathers banished me from their courts, and now I take my revenge. All of you are useless to your fathers until someone will discover this secret. Without her knowing, the blue prince discovered the secret. The next night, the princesses knocked on the floor, but the door did not open. The curse was broken. The blue prince told the king what happened and that the curse is now broken. True to his word, the king let the prince choose his princess, the one who served him the tea. They were both very happy and decided to marry. All sisters celebrated their weddings on same night and they all lived happily ever after. Bella the Beauty and the Beast Once upon a time there lived a merchant with his daughter Bella. I have to leave for business, he said. What should I bring back for you? I would like a rose, father. The merchant rode away on his black horse and Bella waved goodbye to her father. The merchant reached the port and looked around to see his ships. Your ships sank and you have nothing left, told him the port authorities. Sad and tired, the merchant got into a bad storm on his way home. Seeing a castle close by, he went inside to ask for cover for the night. The castle was empty, but there were lots of fresh food on the table. He ate his fill and tired went to sleep. In the morning, he saw that the castle's garden had many stone statues looking like real servants. Every garden alley had statues like these. He saw a rose bush and remembering what Bella asked, he plucked one rose. Suddenly a beast appeared. I give you food and shelter for free and you destroy my property? He yelled. All my ships are gone and I wanted at least a rose to bring back to my daughter. I'm really sorry, but I did not mean to destroy anything. The scared merchant answered, I will let you go if she is willing to take your place and stay here with me. I will give both of you anything you want to live a real good life, the beast said. Tell her to turn this ring three times and she will be here in the same moment. You have forty-eight hours. If none of you come back, I will destroy your home, the beast added. The merchant gave Bella the rose and told her what happened. Don't worry, father. I will go. Bella took the ring turned it three times and disappeared from her father's house. 
At the castle, the beast gave her beautiful dresses and everything she needed. They spent every day together dancing and having fun. Every night the beast will ask, Bella, will you marry me? And she will answer, I'm sorry, but I do not love you. After a while, Bella told the beast, I miss my father and friends. Please let me go visit them and I promise to come back. You have a week, no more. If you don't come back, I will die, he said. Bella used the ring and found herself back home with her happy father. I have to go back now, she said to her father after a week. Stay one more day to celebrate your cousin's wedding. The father insisted, and Bella stayed one more day. The wedding was over and Bella hurried back to the beast. Back to the castle, Bella found the beast very sick. I was afraid you will never come back to me, he said. I just realized that I do love you, she said. And this is why I came back. As soon as she finished her sentence, the beast transformed into a handsome prince. I was very arrogant and a witch transformed me into a beast and my servants into statues, he said. With your love you broke the curse. Will you marry me? Bella agreed. They invited her father and her friends and all the servants who were released from their curse too. They celebrated their wedding for seven days and for seven nights and then lived together happily ever after. Seven Princesses and the Great Enchanted Tree Once upon a time, in a magical world where kingdoms flourished and fairies fluttered, stood the Great Enchanted Tree, known for its beautiful blossoms and sparkling leaves. Its roots connected all kingdoms from Princess Aurora's kingdom to Princess Tiana's kingdom, from Princess Ariel Underwater Kingdom, to Princess Bella's beloved library, to Princess Elsa's frozen kingdom, from Moana's colorful kingdom, to Rapunzel's towering one. One day, the great enchanted tree started to loose its leaves and his colors were turning brown. All seven princesses felt the change. They all came fast and gathered at the bottom of the tree. We have to do something to bring our tree back, said Elsa. He is sad as he thinks we forgot about him. We have to throw a party for him and invite everyone. I know where to find the song he likes, said Aurora. And I will look for the lyrics to the song, added Bella. I will cook my best meal for the party Tiana offered. We will bring the most beautiful shells and flowers from faraway places to decorate the tree, Ariel and Moana said. I will help you to get up in the tree to hang up the decorations, added Rapunzel and Elsa continued. I will make sure the roots are kept cold so not to rot. Once the plan was set, Aurora went to search the magic song that will revive the tree. Bella went to her library to look for the lyrics to the song. Tiana started to cook her special meal for the party. Moana looked for the most beautiful flowers. Ariel started to collect the most beautiful seashells. And Rapunzel started to braid her hair to be easy to climb on it. While Elsa made sure to keep the tree's roots cool. When the princesses gathered together again, they threw a big party for the tree. They decorated the tree and had tables with food around it. They invited everyone from all the kingdoms and sang the magical song. The great enchanted tree came back to itself and fairies flew all around it. Thank you, my beloved princesses, said the great enchanted tree. You made me understand that even if we don't see each other often, we still care and remember. From then on, the seven princesses gathered each year around the tree and recounted their adventures. The great enchanted tree was happy. The whole magical land flourished and more fairy tales were written. The Princess and the Spindle Once upon a time there lived a kind queen and king. They were very happy when baby Rose was born. They invited everyone in the kingdom to celebrate. They also invited the three fairy godmothers to offer special gifts to little Rose. The green fairy godmother wished Rose health and happiness. The red fairy godmother wished Rose to be kind and beautiful. Suddenly, the black fairy showed up. She was very angry that no one invited her to the celebration. At fifteen, you will prick your finger into a spindle and will die, she wished upon little Rose. The queen and king were devastated and didn't know what to do. The golden fairy godmother, who still had a wish to offer, said, You will not die, but sleep for one hundred years until a brave prince will wake you up. The king ordered every weaving loom and their spindles to be destroyed in the whole kingdom to make sure his little Rose is safe. Rose grew up to be a happy, kind and lovely person and everyone loved her. On her 15th birthday, 
Rose strolled through the kingdom and saw a strange machine. She asked the lady working at the loom, What is this? May I work with it too? Of course, said the woman and let Rose weave on the loom. Rose enjoyed learning to weave, but suddenly she pricked her finger with the spindle. Rose felt very tired and wanted to sleep. Ha ha ha, said the woman who was actually the black fairy. You will die now. Not so fast, said the golden fairy godmother who appeared by her side. Remember my special wish when Rose was born? She will not die but sleep one hundred years until a kind prince will wake her up. She waved her wand and Rose fell asleep in her bed. The queen and the king fell asleep while sitting on their thrones. The cooks fell asleep on the kitchen floor. The gardeners fell asleep. The guards and everyone in the castle fell asleep. The golden fairy godmother made sure the castle is safe and surrounded it with thorns. Many tried, but no one could enter the castle. One hundred years went by, and one day a young prince rode by the castle. Like everyone else, he knew the story of Rose and wanted to try to wake her up. The prince started to cut the thorns with his sword. The roses and their thorns fell off and let the door open. The prince entered the castle and saw that everyone was asleep. He also saw Rose asleep in her bed. She was so beautiful that he kissed her. Rose woke up and thanked the prince for saving her. Everyone in the castle woke up too, all happy that the curse was broken. People all over the kingdom were invited to celebrate together. In the end, Rose and the prince celebrated their marriage and lived happily ever after. Princess and the Frog Once upon a time there was a princess who liked to play ball. One day, the ball fell into the lake and disappeared. Disappointed, the princess prepared to get back to the castle. Suddenly a frog appeared and said, I can bring back your ball but you have to kiss me. The princess answered, Sure, no problem, just bring my ball back. The ugly frog brought the ball from the depths of the lake. The princess took the ball and ran away without looking back. She went back to the castle and sat down at the table, ready to eat. But the frog followed her and jumped through the garden. He also jumped all the way through the long halls. He finally reached the room where everyone was eating and said, Princess, I came to collect your promise. The princess told her father, the king, everything that happened. The king said, you have to keep your promise. The princess had to sit at same table with the frog. But father, she tried again. This is a frog. The king said, a promise is a promise. Sad, the princess went to her bedroom. The frog followed her and jumped on her bed. With no other choice, the princess kissed the frog. And then, angry, she took the frog and smashed him on the wall. But something unexpected happened. The frog transformed into a handsome prince who told her, Thank you for breaking the curse. I was so arrogant that a witch cursed me to be a frog until a I was kissed for a good deed. The princess presented the prince to her father, the king, and told him about the curse. They celebrated their marriage and everyone lived happily, ever after. The Golden Apples Once upon a time there lived a king with his three sons. He had an apple tree who would grow every year three golden apples. Before the golden apples could ripe, someone would steal them, leaving only the regular apples. One year, the upset king told to his sons, I want you to catch the thief. The oldest son stood guard the first year, but he fell asleep and did not catch the thief. The second son stood guard the second year, but he fell asleep and did not catch the thief. The youngest son stood guard the third year. He slept all day and in the evening, fully awake, took his place at the bottom of the tree. At midnight he saw three doves picking an apple each and flying away. He shot an arrow that scared one of the doves in dropping the apple and flying away. The prince gave the apple to the king and said, I am going to find the other two apples. The prince and his brothers went to look for the golden apples. In the forest they met an old beggar asking for food. The younger prince stopped and offered the beggar some food. The old man thanked the prince and gave him a mirror and a comb. You will need them, he said. You will find what you are looking for once you cross the Black Mountain, the beggar mentioned. The three princes continued their ride and reached the Black Mountain. It took them a long time to cross the mountain. Finally they saw an imposing red castle and knew that this was their destination. 
Inside, they discovered a golden cage with three white doves. The prince released the smallest dove from the cage, and his brothers released the other two doves. All three doves transformed into beautiful princesses. The black which stole each of them from their castle because their parents banished her. She transformed them into doves and kept them caged all year round. The curse will be broken only when three princes will release them from the golden cage. That will never happen, the witch said. Every year, she will send the doves to steal the golden apples so she can eat them and be young again. They all got out of the witch's castle and rode fast back to their home. Not long after they left, the witch came back and saw that her doves were gone. She started to fly after them. The prince saw her coming and remembering the gift from the beggar, threw back the mirror. The mirror transformed into a very large lake. The witch had to waste time and go around the lake. When the prince saw the witch again, he threw back the comb received from the beggar. The comb transformed into a forest so high and so dense that the witch had no way to cross it. She had to stop following them. Finally home, the three princes presented the princesses to the king. After finding the princess's parents, they all celebrated their wedding and lived happily ever after. Princess Jella and the Colorful Secret Once upon a time, underwater, lived Princess Jella. She was taking care of all the jellyfish in the ocean. Surrounded by her friends, Princess Jella would swim all over the ocean. They liked to visit the Great Coral Reef, home to many colorful fish and sea creatures of all kind. One day, the Great Coral Reef started to lose its bright colors until it almost lost all of it. Sea creatures were worried. Princess Jella told her friends, I will find a way to restore the colors to our Great Coral Reef. She swam to the other side of the ocean to find the wise old turtle. How can I find Walt? She asked the other turtles. He is basking in the sun's rays, but will be happy to see you, they answered. Hello, wise Walt, Princess Jella greeted the giant turtle. The great coral reef lost its colors. What can I do to restore them? The pearl of light will help, but it is in a faraway cave guarded by the giant purple squid, Walt answered. I will get the pearl of light back to the great coral reef to restore its colors she said, and thanking to the wise turtle, she swam away. She swam past schools of colorful fish and through sparkling underwater caves. On her way, she met Diddy the dolphin who wanted to join her in her journey. I can show you the way to the cave where you will find the pearl of light, he offered. Thank you. I appreciate your offer and I am grateful for your help, she said, and they swam together to find the cave. They reached the cave and wanted to swim inside to find the pearl. Stay right where you are. Why are you trespassing my cave? Asked the giant violet squid. The great coral reef lost its colors, and only the pearl of light can restore them, the princess answered. Can you please help us? I see your kindness and bravery, and this is why I will help you, the giant violet squid said. Follow me. They reached the middle of the cave where the pearl of light nested on a shell. Thanking the giant violet squid, Princess Jella collected the shiny pearl and happy, returned home. She placed the pearl of light on top of the great coral reef. Gradually all colors were restored back to it. Everyone was happy and all sea creatures continued to live together in peace and harmony in the vast ocean, enjoying the colorful great coral reef. Princess and the Pea Once upon a time, a princess got caught in a strong storm. She reached a nearby castle and knocked on the door. The princess told the prince of the castle that she lost her way home in the storm. She said that she was a princess and asked if she can be a guest for the night. The prince asked the queen, his mother, for advice. To make sure the princess is a real princess, the queen had an idea. She said the princesses have such gentle skins that they can feel even a small pea under their mattress. The queen told the princess that she can sleep in the pink bedroom. There, under many mattresses, the queen hid a small green pea. Next morning, the queen asked the princess, Did you sleep well? I did not sleep at all, said the princess. I could feel something like a stone under the mattress. The queen, convinced that the princess is a real one, offered her a horse and guards to help her reach her parents' castle. After a few days, the prince asked the princess's parents, the purple king and queen, for their permission to marry their daughter. 
The prince and the princess celebrated their wedding and lived together happily ever after. Princess Stella and the Stardust Miracle Once upon a time the moon was the night's queen, and all the stars were the night's princesses. The moon and her stars were always seeing the earth, far away. The stars would gather and talk and have fun together. Some of them would even talk about visiting earth. Princess Stella, the dreamer, wanted more than anyone to visit. She gathered her courage and went to the moon, please, my queen, I would really like to go visit Earth, she said. If you want it so much, the moon answered, I will give you my star dust. Use half of it to visit and the other half to come back. But remember, this is your only way to come back. I have no more star dust. Happy, Princess Stella thanked Queen Moon and prepared to visit Earth. She used half of the star dust and she found herself as a golden rain falling on the ground below. Princess Stella walked through a beautiful forest and reached a very large, beautiful lake surrounded by trees and flowers. Suddenly the lake started to form large waves, and at midnight, with a big rumble, a castle emerged from its waters. As the Princess Stella watched amazed, a boat was approaching her. Prince came ashore. Hello, Princess, I was waiting for you, he said. My kingdom needs your help. A witch cursed all of us to live underwater because my father, the king, was too greedy. We emerge from the lake only one night a year, and tonight is that night. The king learned his lesson, but to break the curse we need star dust. Can you help us? If I give you my star dust I will never be able to go home again, she said. But if it will help so many people get their life back, I will help. She threw all the remaining star dust over the lake and the curse was broken. All the people in the kingdom came to thank her and she was happy that she made the right choice. I am both grateful and in love with you. Will you marry me? Asked the prince. Princess Stella agreed and they celebrated their wedding. They lived happily ever after, together with all the people saved. Says Serafina and the White Dragon. Once upon a time in the elves' kingdom, lived the kind Princess Serafina. She was the only one with large beautiful white wings in the whole kingdom. Serafina was a warrior, always ready to defend her people. One day angry people came to her asking for help. A white dragon came from the frozen mountains and stole our sheep. They complained. Did any of you did something to provoke the dragon? It never bothered us before. Serafina asked the other elves. No, we did nothing. But some of us saw a stranger with a shiny object in his hands, up high on the mountain. I will go and talk with the white dragon, the princess said to the worried elves. She flew over the white mountains, far, far away, until she reached the white dragon's cave. The white dragon was very angry. Why are you trespassing? I can freeze you to death, the white dragon said. I do not want to fight you. Just tell me why did you steal our sheep? Serafina asked. I lived in this cave for centuries and I never bothered your people. Now, one of you stole my egg. I will continue to take your sheep until you give me back my egg. The white dragon roared. None of us stole your egg. But some have seen a stranger with a shiny object in his hands. Is your egg shiny? The princess asked. Yes, my egg started to shine because it is almost time for it to hatch. This is my first time I lay an egg in two hundred years. The white dragon continued. I just left for a few minutes to drink water, and when I came back the egg was gone. Let's go find your egg. Serafina told the white dragon, and they flew together in search for the stranger in black. Soon, they reached the stranger in black who was holding the dragon egg. Stop right there. Give us the egg if you want to be alive. Both Serafina and the white dragon told the stranger. Why did you steal it? Serafina asked him. The black witch transformed herself into a black dragon and threatens to burn my whole kingdom. Unless I bring her your dragon egg, the stranger said. She will live forever if she eats the egg. I had to save my people, the stranger continued. Give us the egg and we will help you fight the witch. Serafina and the white dragon said both at the same time. The prince agreed and gave them back the dragon egg. The black dragon saw them coming and she attacked them. Your people will die, she roared. No, they will not. I will fight you, the prince answered. 
The egg is mine, not yours. And the white dragon attacked the black one. The dragons fought a long time, both of them strong and fierce. Finally, the white dragon managed to burn the black dragon's wings. And the black dragon fell from the sky shrieking. Thank you for saving my people. The black prince thanked them. We will always be here for you. Happy, the white dragon took her egg and flew back home. Princess Serafina said goodbye to the black prince, promising to help each other in need. Back to the cave, the white dragon waited patiently for the egg to hatch. After a few weeks, to his mother happiness, a cute blue dragon hatched from the egg. Serafina was the only one allowed to hold the baby dragon. From then on, the white dragon would be Serafina's companion, always at her side. Follow us for more adventures of the white dragon, her blue baby and Princess Serafina, Snow Queen and the Brave Sister. Once upon a time Kay and Kara were living with their grandmother. They were poor but happy. The grandmother would take care of them and tell them many stories. In the summer, they would tend to their rose garden together. Kara would sell the red roses at the market. Wintertime Kara would sell rose water to beautiful ladies. One winter while Kay was outside, he saw a beautiful lady in an icy carriage. The Snow Queen invited him to taste a cupcake. Hungry, Kay accepted to sit beside her and eat. Then she gave him an ice cube and asked him, What do you see inside the cube? Kay looked into the cube and icicle slid from it right into his eye and into his heart that turned to ice. I see that you are the most beautiful queen and I want to live with you, he said. All his thoughts about his family vanishing away. They traveled until they reached the frozen castle. There, the queen would sit on her frozen throne while Kay would build ice puzzles. Meanwhile, Kara finished her day at the market and came home. She looked everywhere but could not find Kay. She packed her backpack, said goodbye to her grandmother and set up to find her brother. After a while, a nice old lady told her to stop for rest at her house. Kara agreed and the old lady took care of her and even combed her hair. By combing her hair every day, the old lady was erasing Kara's memories. The lady was lonely and wanted to keep Kara with her. Kara was happy, spending all her time in the garden and also helping the old lady. One day, in a faraway and hidden spot of the garden, she found roses. Did you forget your goal to find Cat? One rose asked Kara. With her memory restored, Kara left to find her brother. Two ravens told her that a young boy with Kay's description just wed the princess from the nearby castle. Kara ran to the castle, but the young man was not her brother. Moved by her story, the princess gave her beautiful clothes and a golden carriage to look for her brother. But on her way, bandits with knives robbed her and threw her in jail. After hearing her story, the daughter of one of the thieves released Kara. She gave Kara the fastest reindeer and new clothes and helped her escape. Finally, Kara saw the Snow Queen's castle shining in the frozen forest. Inside, she saw Kay trying to solve an ice puzzle. Kay! She called him happy that she found him. Kara ran to him and hugged him tight while he was trying to get away from her. Leave me alone. I don't know who you are, he said. She started to cry and her hot tears reached his heart and melted the ice. Kay recognized his sister and they both rushed to escape from the frozen castle. The Snow Queen watched them leave but could do nothing to stop them. Kara and Kay reached home safely and their grandmother hugged them both, happy to have them back. Kay promised not to go away with strangers anymore, and they continued to live and work together with their grandmother. Princess Tiana and the Magical Frog Adventure Once upon a time in New Orleans, there lived a young lady called Tiana. She loved to cook with her father in their kitchen and make wishes on the evening star. One warm evening, Tiana sat on her windowsill, gazing up at the bright evening star. She closed her eyes and whispered, Starlight, star bright, grant my wish tonight. Let my dream come true. The star twinkled extra brightly, as if it heard her. Little did Tiana know that her life was about to change forever. Tiana enjoyed to walk through the bayou, laughing when fireflies would dance around her. One day, while exploring the bayou, Tiana met a talking frog named Naveen. He was under a magical spell and needed a kiss from a princess to turn back into a prince. Tiana kissed him, 
but because she was not a princess guess what? She turned into a frog too. Now, as two frogs, Tiana and Naveen hopped through the swamp, met fireflies and even danced on water lilies. They sang jazz tunes all night long and befriended Louis the alligator, but a wicked witch wanted to take over New Orleans. She cast spells to make the city gloomy and sad. The flowers wilted, the jazz music stopped, and people lost their smiles. Tiana and Naveen, together with all the fireflies and Louis the alligator walked through the streets singing happy jazz songs. Song and happiness broke the curse and all the city's people came out to celebrate. Happy, Tiana and Naveen kissed again and a miracle happened. They transformed back into humans. They were now prince and princess. They both loved to cook, so they opened their restaurant, Tiana's Place. They served gumbo and beignet, jambalaya, and red beans and rice with bananas foster as dessert. Tiana would cook in her beautiful kitchen, and people from all walks of life came to enjoy their gumbo, jazz, and laughter. Tiana learned that sometimes wishes come true in unexpected ways. She now was a chef and a princess and everyone loved her. Princess Jasmine and Aladdin's Secret Once upon a time in an oriental palace lived the beautiful and kind Princess Jasmine. She was fearless and would befriend the most savage animals. Princess Jasmine also loved to read and play music. Most of the time she would be locked in her room as her father, the powerful sultan wanted her to be safe. One day she heard lots of yelling outside her balcony, so she went to see what this was all about. A man and a monkey were trying to escape the guards. The man came closer to her balcony. Suddenly the man and his monkey were inside her balcony. You are not allowed to be here, she said. I will call the guards to throw you out. My name is Aladdin and I have to hide. Please just let me show you why. This magical lamp gives power to whomever holds it. Your father's advisor wants it for himself. Please help me hide it, said Aladdin. I promise to hide the lamp, but you have to get out right now. Come back with the Sultan's approval and I will give it back to you, Princess Jasmine told Aladdin. Once alone, she held the lamp close to her eyes to check if it has any special markings, and she rubbed it to clean the dust. At her touch, the lamp started to glow and a strange fog started to appear from it. Lo and behold, the strange fog transformed into a genie. Hello, my princess. How can I be of service? He asked. Finally understanding Aladdin's secret, Princess Jasmine had her own plan. She asked the genie of the lamp to teach her to fight. It is my honor, princess. I will take many forms while teaching you how to fight, the genie said. The princess started her fighting lesson while the genie will change shapes often. She became more and more proficient and fighting with not one but two swords. In a short time she was so good that she could hold his own against any form the genie would take. As she promised Aladdin, the princess held the lamp in a secret place and took it out only when she was sure no one else was around. Later, when Aladdin and his monkey came to her with the sultan's approval, Princess Jasmine gave him back the lamp. They had many adventures together, but this is a story for another time. Thank you for watching. Come back again.